When our reporter Martin King was granted the first interview with doomed American cult leader David Koresh, no one imagined the terrible events that would follow his world exclusive. Now, 25 years after more than 80 people, including Australian disciples, lost their lives in the Waco siege, survivors still wonder how they and their loved ones fell under his spell. Seeing the images of the fire <laughs> reminds me of the pain that I had gone through that my family had gone through and all the families that were in there and the memory of the loss of my sister. Why did the Jews nail Christ to the cross? They didn't know the prophecy. When Christ reveals himself, it's gonna be according to the book. This day have I begotten. What does that mean to you today when you look back on that and you see those images of that fire? <laughs> the promise was eternal life. What about these people here? What well, are those what, people what here are people... You? Well, you know what they think of me? They think I'm the Son of God. Do they? Yeah. Is he the Son of God? I hope he is. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my Son. This day have I begotten thee. Huh. Someone's the son of God. The reality, the true believers lost their lives while the world watched on. It's a quarter of a century now since we first broke the story of David Koresh, the fanatical cult leader in Waco, Texas. We went to Waco because Australians who'd escaped the cult had made frightening predictions about the intentions of Koresh, who declared himself the son of God. Our exclusive interview with Koresh inside the compound triggered a sensational series of events, from a deadly firefight with federal agents to a 51-day siege. And this, the first time in US history the government used tanks against its own people. 86 men women and children, some of them tragically Australians, died in the inferno. David Koresh. What goes through your mind when you see David Koresh now? I think of anger, someone who was obsessed with power. Well, he was obsessed with a lot of things, wasn't he? He was obsessed he was with obs many things. With, with, with death? Yes. With religion? Right. Power? Yes. The apocalypse? Yes. All those. And sex? Yes. In Waco, religion is a way of life. So are guns. Travel a short distance outside town and you come to Mount Carmel, 77 acres of flat, desolate prairie. This was home for Grace Adams, the compound of the Branch Davidian cult along with almost 100 other people from around the world, including her sister Rebecca and some Australians, Grace was searching for answers to life. We believed that this man had a truth that we needed to know. What truth did you want? We wanted to know that God had a message for us, and this man said he had that message. You have guns? Yeah, we have some. Well, can we see that? Is that OK? Well, I guess if you want, <laughs> you know. Now, it makes nobody's business whether we have a gun or not at this place. Guns are the right of Americans to have. You know, it's bringing up guns in, in, in a situation like this is something that can be, you know how people think. You know, y'all don't have guns in Australia. Yeah. People would kill me. This is one year before the hellfire at Waco. For the first time ever, David Koresh, real name Vernon Howe, had agreed to an interview. It may have been a world exclusive, but to tell the world, first you need to leave. And behind the scenes, we were told by Koresh security, you will never leave here alive. Everything that you heard, everything that you saw, that was all pre-planned. Koresh would have told them to say those things, to do those things, to act a certain way. 
We knew Koresh had an armory, and with so many lives at risk, the question had to be asked. Would you use a gun if somebody came in here? They come in here with a gun, and they start shooting at us. What would you do? Tell me. Be realistic. This is America. This is not Australia. This is not Europe. This is not where a country overthrows a bunch of people, takes away their weapons so that the people cannot argue any issues. Did King David have swords? Did Jesus tell the apostles to carry a sword with you? Yes. Among the dust and the rubble and the abandoned vehicles and construction, we speak with the believers. It's serene here, tranquil. People seem happy. Who is worthy to open this book and to loose the seals thereof? The man was on a roll, but it was time for him to be rolled. He'd had sex with most of the women in this sermon, sitting happily with their husbands. No time like the present. People say you've been sleeping with the women here. Is that true? No, only one. And she's tired of it. Now, I mean, she's tired of the accusations. We also put to Koresh claims that he had sex with children and underage girls. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The guy's tough. He's got more than guns. He's got God. I basically got hooked. Bruce and Lisa Gent moved from Melbourne to join the cult. They left in disgust, but their twin children, Peter and Nicole, stayed on. Nicole had two children with Koresh. I was locked up, I was, um, Koresh came and slapped me around. And Grace saved her own life by fleeing Mount Carmel just months before the fire. Her sin? I offered myself to him. Sexually? Sexually. You don't go to the prophet, the prophet comes to you. Inquisition! Death! Murder! One year on, the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms Bureau, the ATF, trying to serve a firearms warrant, attacked the compound. Six cult members and four ATF agents died. During a 51-day siege, we flew the jets from Melbourne to Texas. They were desperate for news of their children and grandchildren and rang the FBI. We're to a stage where I don't know whether I've got two children or not. Tragically, Peter Gent was dead the entire time they were there, the first to be shot. Nicole and her children all perished in the fire after the FBI tired of waiting. It turned the tanks and choppers on its own people, then later destroyed evidence. I blame Koresh because he didn't bring the people out. They were not going to come out unless he gave them the OK. The FBI, I think it was badly handled by them. It could have been done another way. Most of the people we filmed at Mount Carmel died in the fire. There was no eternal life, no beautiful end. Just the slaughter of the innocents caught in the battle of wills between the madman of Waco and the US military machine. I think um, it will only be the survivors and those who were there that will know the real story. It is hard to believe it's 25 years. Grace now uses her Waco experience to educate people on the dangers of cults.